Welcome to another episode of Cocktails and Curtain Calls. I'm Matt Austin. And I am Beth Young. And for the next half an hour, we are, again, for what episode are we up to? I'm 100 million? 412? Yes, something I like that. <laughs> we're still talking about theater because there's so much theater. We're back. We're, we're back. back. We took we're a little back, break. Yeah, a little break. A little break over Had the holidays. Nice, happy, happy New Year yep. to everybody. How were uh, your holidays? Good. They were we great. talked off camera. They were, they were great. They were, they were great. I actually went to Sonoma for, oh, for New Year's. Oh. My sister and her husband are out there. So, yeah, it was really nice. It was great. That's I'd never nice. been there. It was really nice. Have you never been out there? I'd been to California, but I'd never but been to, to yeah, Sonoma. Yeah, no, and I'd been to Napa, which is different than Sonoma. A little different. A little laid yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Sonoma could be the wine. Is San Francisco, right? Right, it's right out, outside there. It's about there. an hour. About an hour. hour outside of San Francisco. Nice. But it's, yeah, it's beautiful. They love it. Um, and you? I did not go to Sonoma. <laughs> did you have good holidays? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I think I think. I think so. It seems right? like a million years ago. It seems ago. like a million yeah, years like a million ago. Years ago. It's, I and did a Christmas carol, and that was how I celebrated the holiday, pretty much. And that's a good way to celebrate. <laughs> I and guess. it went well. I guess. It did. It did. I got very sick one weekend. Um, and uh, to the point, have Sorry. you ever, oh, this is, a, no, it's okay. Um, you ever get so sick where you don't even know where you are? Um, like, you, you're not even sure what's happening? I'm not sure what's happening. Most days anyway. <laughs> I'm not well, sure. I got so sick that I stepped out onto the stage, and... My so my song started and I didn't know where I was and I just started singing oh things. My. <laughs> they didn't make any sense. But you kept moving. I kept moving. We That's got through good. the song. That was only one night. The rest of the nights went okay. Went okay. Um, but, and nobody noticed. Oh, I think they noticed. <laughs> I definitely Maybe. think they noticed. But, uh, well, uh, but good yeah, for you was, for the show must come on. I guess. Good for you for but, proving that oof, point. That was that was rough. But the show overall went great. And good. It sold out. And, good. Good, so we yeah. should have two really great guests tonight. Yes. Oh, we should talk yeah, about Let's them. talk about That's our guests. Here. Right. Uh, they're return guests. The return guests. Yeah. Yep. They've been here before, and yeah. we're glad to have them back. They are um, Katie Diamond and Daniel C. Levine from ACT in Ridgefield. Mm -hmm. uh, they're coming in to talk about their next production, which is a revamped version of Stephen Schwartz's Working. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to yeah. talk to them. I've been reading a lot about this production and what they're doing with it, so it'll be... You know, I, it, and I was thinking, to, you know, likewise, and I was thinking, how kind of relevant and what an opportunity to update this and contemporize oh, yeah. it. So I, too, am really curious as yeah. to where they went with that. Um, I don't know if it's brand new material, songs. I, I think some know. of them. There's a couple of things from Lin-Manuel. I think he contributed. That's yeah. right. I saw that. I think yeah. he contributed some. We'll talk to them. Okay, I, we're going to get Let's just, get this whole segment is just us speculating yeah, we're about just spec working. We're going to find out from those in the know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but s things that I've seen, I, yeah. while we were, you know, on break, we had our last interview was with... Um, Arnold Daly? Yes. Now, am I giving him the right first name? Because he had two. Yes. Daly. It's uh, his, his, Yes, Arnold Daly. Arnold Daly, yes. who is the director of Francis Animal A. Mancha. Daly Francis is his, Oh, so Francis A. Is, okay. Arnold's a nickname, but Francis A. Daly is. Is, yeah. is in full. Yeah. Um, director of Man of La Mancha. Yeah. And I saw that, and it was impressive. I and yeah. I must say the set, which, of course, is so Incredible. crucial yeah. in that production, was the stairs gave me the creeps. Yeah. I mean, it was really. Oh, yeah, every time they yeah, come yeah, down. Yeah, that slow grindings as they came down. So it was, it was that was just beautifully done. Um, the set was great, and I and the stairs were very. Eerie. Eerie. Yeah. And, but as, a, as someone, like, as an actor, there was a part of me that was like, those actors are acting under those stairs. I'd be so scared. I mean, it was like very safe. Helmets. It yeah. was very safe, and I, I saw the rigging they did up there. But there was a part of me that was like, can you imagine if those stairs just fell down? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's so funny you say that because I'm a chronic warrior, and I didn't think about that, that was for the, a second. It was, <laughs> it was literally the first thing I thought of when I walked in that stairs. I was like, those people are acting under those stairs. <laughs> And what if that something snapped? But everything was very safe. Everything went fine. No great. accidents. Nobody was hurt in the production. Yeah, nobody. Absolutely. Um, it went well. And another thing I saw that was, it, I was really impressed by, and I've seen it probably three or four productions of um, the uh, It's a Wonderful Life radio oh, show. Oh, at the Richfield Theater Barn. At the Richfield yeah, Theater Barn. Yeah. Some great new talent I saw there. Really, really terrific production. Very engaging. Very entertaining. And again, that never fails to make me cry. Yeah. And it was done as a radio show. It was yeah. really that's, just wonderful. Really, really great. good. It was a really nice production and a nice, nice celebratory kind of thing. Yeah, it was a nice substitution because they had Frog and Toad and then they couldn't do that. So then they ended up doing that. Right. And I think that production, I was saying off, off 
uh, air that production included a lot of people from the community who had not been on the stage previous previously or for yeah. a long or for a long time, time. when someone yeah. returning it was a great it's a big cast yeah. so it was yeah. a great opportunity for them to you know kind of come back into it um, yeah. but it was yeah really really nicely done I thoroughly enjoyed it um, and they are opening shortly yes probably about the time this old is going to air with old ringers yeah. so not dead be, ringers not dead <laughs> ringers which I which? almost said but um, just because I've heard it more often. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. yeah. Um, but but uh, old ringers. So we will have people on to yeah. talk about that. That's coming up on yeah, February first. Uh, I think that'll be our next episode. That's right? our next yeah. episode. Our next episode. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah, that's their next production. A lo per what? I can't say words. Um, a lot of good stuff coming up. Yes. Um, so race. David Mamet's race at Theater Works is opening. Uh, Venus and Fur. And at, that opens at on the fifteenth, February fifteenth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then twenty second. 22nd for, um, for race. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Lost in Yonkers, March 1st. This so is, February's busy, busy, busy. This is the opening of everyone's season. Oh, we'll and talk then Working with, starts. Yeah, and then working, working. In the middle of the month, 14th. 14th? Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. We'll talk to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll get the exact we'll date, but the exact I'm pretty dates. sure that's when it at least starts previews. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to have them here, but I, my guess is that they're selling tickets very quickly. Yeah. Um, they they yeah, have yeah. been doing that a lot with their productions. So. Yeah, and they will share with us the many um, accolades yeah. at the, and awards that oh, they've yeah. received for productions they've done already, which is... Yeah, and first been year. A year. A yeah. year. This yeah. year. So, so that's exciting. Um, yeah. uh, and then, what yeah, uh, well, the only other thing I saw was for the second time was what the Constitution means to me, which is moving to Broadway. Moving to Broadway and yeah, Helen which Hayes, is pretty, yeah. pretty exciting. <clears throat> How big is the Helen Hayes? Not you very big. Not very big. It's, it is, uh, so there is a certain seating, I don't know the number. I used to know when I worked at Broadway.com. There's a certain number of seats that makes it a Broadway theater. Right. This has exactly one more more than the number of seats needed. It's something like I want to say five hundred or five fifty or something. Right. It's a very intimate small space, which is Well, I will cool. say the reason I saw it twice is because it is fabulous. That's, that's it, what I've heard. It yeah. is fabulous. It's a one person It's show, well, or, there's other people in it. There's there's a couple other people in oh, it. I'm not so going to give it away, uh, <laughs> but it's her story of what the Constitution means to her, and I, you know, it seems true. I I bought it, um, and I, I, think I think it, it is. is true, yeah, I right? think it yeah. is. Uh, but she is amazing, and the writing is. Which yeah. she wrote it. Yeah. So I had the benefit of seeing it in two very separate but very intimate settings, really small stages. I saw it at um, New York Theater, Theater Workshop, yeah. and then I saw it at Greenwich House, which is oh. a yeah. I mean, we, it's really like an auditorium, yeah. but it so we side and west side uh, downtown, but both productions just. Awesome, awesome, Very awesome. Cool. Yeah, lost nothing in the second run. Yeah. So I recommend it. It's it's a it's a, a buy. We're getting the we're getting the hook. Uh, ah, the so hook. yeah, <laughs> we got some wonderful guests, so we don't want to take up their time. Um, so we will be right back with uh, Daniel C. Levine and Katie Diamond yep. from don't A go anywhere. ACT uh, in Richfield. So join us in a little bit. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back and visiting yeah. with us and our guests, Daniel C. Levine and Katie Diamond. Thank you so much for yeah. coming. Thanks for having us again. Yeah, it's, great. it's great. Good it's great. I'm dying to hear all about what <laughs> yes. you're doing. I just want to announce the name of your theater, ACT, in Ridgefield, Connecticut. And they are presenting a production of... A revamped, is that how we should revamped. say? Yeah. Production of Stephen Schwartz Working, which opens on February 15th. Is that 14th. previews? 14th. 14th, yes. yeah, there's yes. two previews and then real opening night is what, the 16th? 16th, yeah. Yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, great. Well, congratulations. Thank We're you. looking forward to That's it. You're really great. So. Well into production, into yeah. rehearsals now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and how's busy. that going? Good, good. I mean, we've cast uh, such fantastic actors and the musicians are amazing and we have the greatest designers for this show because we this is a big sort of multimedia event a it, big a very different take on working if anybody has seen working before this is not a working that they have seen um, and it's uh, yeah it's just sort of a brand
brand new version of the thing, so we have a lot of new designers working on it. I, I have a question for you. So <laughs> she has like twelve questions. I, okay, <laughs> and this one just we only have a certain my amount of time. Okay, <laughs> so first, I just want to ask you about just briefly about your audition process because you you get cast from. New York, and mm -hmm. you really bring in people. You know, when I read through the bios, I'm like these people come from all over. To mm -hmm. where are your auditions? Do you hold them in at ACT? Yeah, so both we we hold auditions both at ACT in Ridgefield and in New York City. Okay. So uh, as required by our actors union, we have an equity principal audition, is what it's called in Ridgefield, where um, any equity members, so people in actors in the union, can sign up for an audition spot. Um, and then we see non-equity, non-union actors as time allows. We just had auditions the other day for our next two shows, and we had uh, like 150 people show up wow, um, at the theater. Yeah, so wow. it's great. And then we do That's go to great. the city. Uh, we have a casting director in the city who does a number of, of auditions, um, probably four or five days yeah, of auditions. Yeah, it's generally a whole week of, yeah. of auditions. And then we go to the yeah. final callbacks in the city. Well, um, you've, yeah. I mean, I've seen everything you've done so far. The cast have been fabulous. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we, so, we were talking off camera. Is this what you were going to bring no, up? No, go right We were talking ahead. off camera about your rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. It's very much like a Broadway rehearsal process in that it's only a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It's quick, that, yeah. yeah. It's um, it's about three and a half weeks. So generally, what I say is generally it's it's uh, the first couple of days, two days, or day and a half actually, is to teach all of the music to the cast. Okay. Um, the remainder of that first week is staging, blocking, teaching all the choreographer, right. choreography of Act One. The second week is teaching all of Act Two, and then the third week is adding all the technical elements: mm -hmm. the lights, the turntable, the sound, costumes, props, uh, everything. So, everything. yeah, the, mu the musicians, uh, sound. Um, so it's it's pretty quick. So fast and furious. It's fast yeah, and furious. That so. is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's actually making me a little anxious. <laughs> <laughs> now, has the that third been week different? sounds really intense. Has no. that been different for working because? You've been rework. Well, no pun intended. You've been <laughs> reworking the piece with Stephen Schwartz. Yeah, the pre-production has been it's, different. It's been yeah, different. the rehearsal period will be the same. But again, because it's a, a brand new version yeah. of of working um, that Stephen and I are are creating together, mm. um, it's yeah. There's been about four months of 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 work before actors even arrive. So you collaborated with Mr. Schwartz mm -hmm. on how to redo this show, or how so. What I'm curious about, and something I just mentioned in the, in the opening, is is it contemporized? Mm -hmm. It is. Right. Because how topical yeah. it is is really so relevant right. now. All so right. when, when Katie and I decided that uh, that working should be part of our, our first uh, full season, um, I revisited the script and I revisited the score and you know listening to it and reading and and uh, just doing all my research. I went back to the source material, which was Studs Terkel's you know original right. book from 1976, I think, um, and uh, and the show still holds up. The music is extraordinary. It was one of my favorite you know Broadway scores that I listened to when I was younger. Um, but I I felt as a director that I really needed to um, understand these characters better. Um, so I started talking to people around town. I started interviewing um, local workers, like um, like uh, like the mail lady, or a cleaning lady, or a teacher, or uh, the late Rosie at Tony's Deli, uh, right. or the woman behind CVS, or the bagger at Stop and Shop. Right. I started talking to all these people so I could understand their hopes and their dreams and things that are important to them, and which is what working is about. Right. And after I did about four or five of these interviews, um, I had the idea that. That this is today, you know, technology has changed, jobs have changed, um, women in the workforce has changed, non-native, non-born, uh, you know, uh, citizens right. are, are are having jobs that they couldn't have in the '70s. So it's just a different. Women are owning businesses, and it was very different in the '70s. So, I went to Stephen, and I, and I I said, we of course love this, and love the show, we want to do the show, but would you be okay with me? Updating it, or reimagining it, or maybe taking some of the original book, you know, the, the script, right, right. Um, and and maybe omitting some of the scenes and replacing them with some of these. And you know, it was a pitch to to Stephen, and he was like, "I love it." And 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 as it turns out, every ten years, they um, Stephen does a little bit of tweaking of the script to update right. the thing. Um, you know, in the original, there was a, a telephone operator, right? And that we don't have operators yeah, like that yeah. anymore. So now that's turned into like Verizon call center kind of thing, right? So it changes. And then, as I was, you know, as I was going through the, all these interviews and everything, I decided. Well, I had the idea. Wouldn't it be great if I could actually videotape 
these people at work um, and somehow make have the them people you've interviewed the people that I interviewed and ah, somehow have them okay. make an appearance in the show. So we hired a camera crew, this like incredible camera crew with drones and and steady cams and all mm -hmm. this. And we got this most incredible, beautiful footage of all these twelve workers that you know right. in Richfield. Um, and then I started really going through the script and figuring out what probably I wanted to add and what would mean, you know, what I would have to take out and how to make these transitions work. And I presented the thing to Steven and Steven loved it. And together we worked on things that maybe he felt weren't working in my idea. Um, and then, uh, and then, you know, put some things back. We moved songs around where it's the score remains the same, but we right. moved uh, positions of the songs throughout the show. And it was like a four month uh, period. So what people will see and this version of working is, of course, our live, you know, Broadway, uh, New York actors um, doing doing the traditional working. But within that, we're going to see local Ridgefield workers. We will hear their authentic voices because there's this great really? audio that plays throughout the show. But also, we're going to see there's a, a bunch of uh, surfaces that we can project and have video on throughout the um, on the set. Um, that was so. Is that kind of the backdrop, and then it takes sort place of. in front of it's the, sort okay. of the backdrop sometimes, and then right. other times it is. Um, it's it's the scene very central. with the actors uh, interacting with this video yeah. in a very clever and oh, beautiful way. Wow! So, yeah, that's very cool. That is very, very cool. clever. Yeah. yeah, and 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 again, the mixed media component mm -hmm. of yeah. that updates it right there. Yeah. I mean, makes it very relevant mm -hmm. right now. So that's yeah. very clever. But music stays the same. Music stays the same, and of course, there's you know there's new music from the original. Uh, uh, Songs from uh, Lin Manuel Miranda of Hamilton. Uh, he's he's uh, written some so some music for the show, which didn't exist originally. Um, so is this the first time that's going to no, be? No, that has happened uh, before. 2012. Yeah, 2012. 2012. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's exciting, but you know, it's Stephen had you know when Stephen started writing this show. Um, because he really loved the Studs Terkel book and was very interested in understanding the American workforce and honoring the American workforce. Um, he started writing all the music to the show, and he had this thought that. Um, you know, of course he could write about an African-American cleaning lady, but maybe an African-American composer, songwriter, could write better, than more authentic than, right. than Stephen could. So, so Stephen pretty brilliantly um, talked to many, many other composers, Craig Carnelia, James Taylor. I saw yeah. that yeah, on yeah, the original. Um, yeah, yes. Mary Rogers, all these great, great uh, composers, very, very talented and skilled people. Um, and so, even though it's Stephen Schwartz is working, there's actually music from many, many other composers, right. which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And it gives the thing, um, it gives the show like a very different uh, sound almost. Right, you know, but every, every scene feels different. Oh, that's yeah. so unique because it's so multi, you know, the multiple voices yeah. and and uh, and thoughts and and ideologies. It's really the yeah. so they wrote lyr lyrics and music yes. to it. Mm -hmm. But the book is written by Stephen Schwartz. Too. Yeah, which actually was written by Studs Terkel because what he really tried to do is is really lift those interviews to have you know have the really authentic mm. voice. Oh, he of course okay. had to tweak and edit and all of that, but well, it but turned yeah. into dialogue. Yeah, right, right, exactly. right. Yeah. But it was because the Studs Terkel book was a is a series of interviews. Interviews, yeah. right, right, Essentially right. Essentially, like what I did in Ridgefield with these new workers. Right. Um, we, I really wanted to make sure I was doing it the exact same way as Studs Terkel did it. Right. Um, and I read a lot about how he conducted these interviews and talked to Stephen about it. Um, so yeah, it's it's very it's a cool cool production and a really I, th I think a neat concept. I'm so. very excited yeah. to see this, and I'm curious. Just, and this maybe is more of a sociology question, but what is the audience going to see that's that's relevant now? That you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm asking? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. what? Yeah. What are they going to see that speaks to their experience, like commutes or, you know, like you say drones, I'm imagining, you know, <laughs> somebody showing people stuck in traffic, right? You mean, so you mean yeah. like in these interviews, what are people going to... Right, right, yeah, that's different than what, right, right. Yeah. Um, as opposed to the original? Or just in general? Just in general. I think the faces all look different. I think we saw a lot of white faces with jobs in 1976. In the, right. In this, you know, w w with the exception yeah. of an African-American cleaning lady. Right. And right. that's mm -hmm. not the case anymore. It's actually we have a white cleaning lady now, right? Right. And, uh, and we see a lot of, um, we see a lot of, uh, Non and non-native born uh, people holding holding important positions, right? right? We right. see we see female business owners. Um, we see just all sorts of things. So I just think, and also technology has changed so much, right? So the right. jobs are actually quite different than they were right. originally. So yeah, I mean, it was really important to me um, that this show pay tribute and honor 
um, are workers of today. Right. Um, and, and you know, it's so funny. Like, and I talked to Stephen about this in interviewing all of these people. What I learned is that people just wanted to people just want to be acknowledged and and respected, and they want to do great work, and um, and and they want some sort of uh, again acknowledgement that uh, that the work that they are doing is important and right. valued and appreciated. Um, and uh, I think that people will walk away from the show thinking like, I never thought of the person working at McDonald's this way. Like, right. you know, you go and you order your quarter pounder with cheese, well, maybe not not you guys, but I will go and <laughs> order my quarter pounder with cheese. Um, and, uh, I've and, been there. <laughs> I've been, and not really think about the, the guy that yeah. just took my order. Right. And I think that after lear- meeting these people and learning about these people's lives and hopes and dreams right. and families and, and everything, um, that we will, you know, hopefully that the goal is that people will look at people in a different way. Right, it comes down right. to that empathy. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. Empathy totally. and validation for people's, yeah. for people's experience, Absolutely, right? Yeah. That who are these people and what do they mean yeah. to us as a society? Mm-hmm. I think that's so important. Well, yeah. and I think also what's interesting about what Dan and Stephen have done with this is uh, the audience will really walk away with this feeling that we've changed so much since 1976. Mm-hmm. But we're still the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Imagine we're the same at heart. Yeah. People still want to contribute to society. They still want to be recognized for what they've done. They still want to be able to provide for their families. I mean, it's all the same basic life needs. Yeah, the themes right. you know? remain the, the same. The right. Themes mm-hmm. are the same. Right, mm-hmm. right. But mm-hmm. to be honored yeah. as workers, mm-hmm. right. to be honored. They're yeah. not, you know. To, and I think also there's something about the. Um, I, and I'm not really sure how to explain this, but kind of the validation of, of hope. Mm-hmm. You know, when you see the change, like mm-hmm. anybody who's seen it before sees the evolution of mm-hmm. the American worker, right. and that's hopeful. Right. You yeah. know. Yeah. That, and yeah. we talk about that at the beginning of the show. Actually, we talk about how in 1976, Studs Terkel wrote this thing, and then in 2012, they revisited these interviews, and now, you know, and now with the ACT uh, production, that we are again revisiting the American workforce um, and and mm-hmm. people and the jobs that they do and all that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in another decade, what the jobs will yeah. look like what then, it, and who the people like that, will be. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly, so, yeah. exactly. But just again, such a hopeful message, which is so important. Yeah, no, it you is. You know mm-hmm. that, yeah, that it still matters. We still matter as as workers yeah. and as people, and 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 that there is more opportunity. Absolutely, you know, that opportunity mm-hmm. is being created and growing. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe not as quickly as we'd like, right. but look, it's here's proof of it Absolutely. right here. It's totally right what you're saying. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, and I was, you know, it's and the people that I chose to interview are people that I interact with on a on a weekly basis. Like I said, the the lady behind the CVS register. Um, you know, every time I go to CVS and I buy something, I kind of, I always, for the past like two years, I always sort of wait for her because I, I love that she waits up. You know, I love right. her demeanor and everything. She's always smiling and and I can tell sometimes she's like truly smiling and other times she's like smiling because she was told to smile. Her job. That's yeah. her job. Yeah. Yeah. And, I was, and, and, and I was just really interested in her and interested That's in it. So I, she's one of the people that I interviewed and understanding who she is, that smile is a totally different smile right. for me now. And right. that's what I want people mm. to take away, right? Right, right. So it's, right. It's, it's, it's cool. Everybody has a bad day, and yeah. they still have to smile through it. Yeah. I just have to ask you, so when you approach these people to say, I'd like to, what, did anybody say yeah, no? Yeah, what was their reaction? Yeah, yeah. yeah, did yeah. So yeah. people were a little bit like, that, I mean, I, I, again, I chose people that I interact right. with. Yeah. On you a didn't daily come basis. up as a stranger, no. like because um, you know, and I, I just want to just backtrack a moment. Yeah, okay. Say, I love your technique because <laughs> you talked about like sort of walking through the Stop and Shop in Ridgefield and asking people what kind of shows they'd like to I, see. That's true. When you yeah. first started, I, yeah. like yeah. I like your, I like your methods. <laughs> it's very yes. boots on the ground. You're referring <laughs> to when we chose our yeah. season, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. What do you, yes. what do you think you'd like to see? Yeah. Do you want to see Mama Mia, Evita, and right? Exactly. And how are the pairs today? Yeah. I just like that. Yeah. No, so so in, uh, the way that the interview process uh, took place was I simply asked them if I could, and um, and I stood with them while they were working, and for a half hour just talked and took some notes and was trying to be very very discreet, and then I realized that I need to really record the thing. So then um, I scheduled like a true sit down with them, and mm-hmm. some of them came to the theater, and we set up a little sound booth and where I put a professional recording device. Or some of them didn't feel comfortable going to the theater, and so I did it at their jobs, um, and. And um, yeah, and I recorded like probably like an hour to an hour and a half of each person. Then I transcribed all of that work and read through everything um, and picked out the parts that I thought were really, really like significant and that also helped to tell the story of working because there actually is a through line in the show. It's not just a series of vignettes. Right. There's, we're really trying to weave together. Which is something I love about that show. Yeah. Is that you get these disparate stories that 
that come connection together in this yes. way. Yeah, I exactly. love that. Yep. Um, and then again, when I when I brought the idea to Stephen about now I'd like to int incorporate video work, then I had to go back to them and say, okay, so now I'm going to bring a huge camera crew, I'm going to videotape you <laughs> making this sandwich, and um, and that was kind of cool. Um, but I think yeah, they liked it. They liked it. They were like, they're going to. By the way, we yeah. opened February 14th, and they're going to be like local celebrities. Yeah, they are. Hashtag Ridgefield famous. Yeah, yeah. Ridgefield famous. <laughs> I do have pictures are. of them like in that hallway as you yeah. go down. Like, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see. Oh, that, uh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, and some of them just had so much to say and talk, 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 talk. So the interview was very easy. Others, you know, I would say, you know, tell me what it was like uh, growing up. What, what did you want to be when you were a little girl? Did you want to be, you know, did you want to work at Stop and Shop? Did you want, what, what did you want to be? Right. And she's, uh, you know, it would be like, veterinarian. So I was like, oh God, this is going to be really, really, really hard because it was right. one word. And yeah. then as you, you know, they're nervous because there's a recording device there. And yeah, this, yeah, you yeah. know, person that they sort of know, a customer of theirs asking them questions. Um, and then, you really have to make it feel like a conversation and ask very leading questions and try to like pull things. It's about being a, a good interviewer. That's the whole thing, right? Right. Um, and then finally, after like an hour, an hour and a half, I feel like I got all the great content then, that I needed. And I mean, some of these stories are just crazy and fantastic and beautiful and heart-wrenching and emotional. And I, I can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, so, I'm thrilled that you did this yeah. and, and went that extra mile to do it, really, because you could have just taken it and done it. Right. But you were motivated. But our mission at ACT, it, which is a contemporary theater, is to really like rethink mm -hmm. things and to and to put a spin on it and to, um, and I don't want to say modernize it, but you know, if we were going to do uh, Carousel, um, we would we wouldn't be able to do. Yeah, it would be a reimagined right. Carousel. You know, right. maybe we're talking right. about this actually not Carousel, but we're talking about our season next season. Um, and it's like, you know what, maybe on this particular show that we're talking about, maybe the actors also play the musicians, are also the musicians and play the instruments, oh which would make goodness. casting very difficult. But yes. things like that, you know what yeah. I mean? We're, like, we're yeah. just sort of, yeah. we want to not, we want to sort of think outside the box for all right. of our shows. Right, right. Yeah, but what a great, I mean, you have this opportunity, yeah. why not? Yeah. But to be so creative and also so invested in your community to, to give them the opportunity mm -hmm. to be heard and seen. I right. think it's great. Thank I love it. Yeah. I love it. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Well, yeah. Like We could talk to you for like six hours, yeah. you guys, and we're getting the wave from the booth All that right. it's over. Oh my gosh, already? I know. Uh, I know. I know. It's, just like, it's like this. But yeah. um, before before we let you guys go, just quickly. Oh, wait, what's... wait, no, yeah, wait. No, we have to say we have a graphic. Oh, yeah. You oh, want to put yes. up a graphic just really? Oh. briefly that they yeah. will put up um, but well, that's that what you were saying beforehand yeah, yeah. so okay. I was trying to go there so, didn't you what are you talking about? <laughs> so so we do have a graphic we'd like to show it and yes. uh, and you'll see on the graphic the dates and the times uh, the, the place where you can get tickets how you can get yes. tickets mm -hmm. and the uh, dates of the pr production so and as, I, yes. as I said at the beginning of the show too um, go grab tickets because they They'll sell very quickly especially for you after guys. everyone sees <laughs> this because yes. this is really really inspiring what you do thank you is the graphic going to be they're putting it in there. Oh, it's it's it yeah, in. right over it's us right now. We're just. I've talking never done this it. before. Okay. <laughs> um, very never fancy. had a post very production. Very fancy. Post production. Yeah. 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 Um, so great. You saw the graphic. Great. Um, talk about quickly the rest of your season. Yeah. Um, so next, uh, right after working closes, actually we have a brand new musical. It's called Austin's Pride. Yeah. Uh, it's about Jane Austen and her writing of Pride and Prejudice. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful score. This show is uh, hoping to make its Broadway debut next season. So we are really uh, feel thrilled that we yeah. get to. Uh, produce it before it goes to Broadway. So that's exciting. And then right after that, we um, have the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, oh, which will be our sure. last show of this first season. Yeah. So um, that will be in June. Um, and then, of course, we have summer programming with our kids camps and our New Works Festival. Oh, you are going to yeah. have nice. Yeah, oh, great. yeah great. we did camps last summer. They were great. Um, and you guys really are doing classes well and workshops, mm -hmm. too. We are. Yeah. The yeah. Master, we have we a whole had, conservatory program. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. master classes. And that's yeah, awesome. we have a lot going on. Awesome. Good for you. Great. Yeah. We don't like to stay still. A great first year, I would say. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You've done a lot. You've thank accomplished you so a lot. Yeah, That's we great. can't wait to have you back thank to you. talk about Austin's Pride. Yeah, good. Spelling Bee. Well, for we'll sure. Yeah. We will Wonderful. stay in touch. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. So much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for supporting us. It's really, much. really nice. And thank you guys for joining us. If you want more information about working, about us, et cetera, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash cocktails and curtain call show. It's been like two months since I did that. I thought I was going to forget. You can send us an email. Cocktails and curtain calls at gmail.com. Uh, that is our email. And thank you again for joining thank us. Thank you so and much. We will see you next time.